back to today's video now before we get into the top of today's video i want to tell you an easy way and earn a shark cards for free that's right for free you heard me right there it's actually insane when i heard about this app i couldn't believe it and now i regret ever bothering with grinding grand theft auto online and it has saved me from doing any more grinding in the game ever since so this cool new little app is called cash for apps which is available on android and ios it's a very simple app which rewards you for downloading and trying out new apps with points which can then be later used when you have earned enough to purchase shark cards for basically free with minimum effort which is a great way to have money prepared for the brand new update coming out tomorrow in grand theft auto online being after hours which is going to be significantly expensive so this app is a great way to earn money for free without costing you anything except your personal time the points you earn doesn't even have to be used to purchase shark cards you could use your points for money on other services which makes this app potentially great investment in your time so it's definitely worth checking out i'll leave a link down in the description of this video so make sure you use my code by clicking the link in the description to get a head start now let's get right into the subject of the video so welcome back to today's tips and tricks in today's video i aim to teach you how to make the most money as a ceo efficiently now this guide will be earning you around four million every Every day which will involve using the cargo warehouses and the vehicle warehouses also in addition it will involve using the biker businesses and the bunker so this guide might be a bit too much to comprehend at first with the amount of information but I'll try to keep the guide as simplistic as possible also for the businesses and the bunker side I'm be going under the assumption that you have the max upgrades already in both businesses. Now if you don't have them upgraded or don't have enough money to own each type of business then I highly recommend that you save up for the vehicle warehouse and then proceed to build up your money from there until you can gradually build up your money to purchase a bunker and then purchase the rest of the businesses required for this guide. But anyway let's get back into the guide on the impression that you have every business required with maximum upgrades. So it takes approximately 12 hours for the bunker to fully fill up with product and it takes around five purchases of supplies to fill it up and each supply purchases last around 144 minutes before more supplies need purchasing. Also it takes five hours for every bag of business to fill up and they need new supplies purchasing around every two hours. Also it's very beneficial if you have your clubhouse located in the city so that you can easily check when your businesses need resupplying. Now remember that's how long it takes with max upgrades on the businesses. Also, you need to be in free room for your businesses to fill up, so now you're probably wondering what to do in the meantime in a free room session whilst everything is filling up. Well, this is where it becomes essential that you have a solo public session, which I have done another guide down in the description if you want to know how to achieve an empty public session. Now, the biker business at locations doesn't really matter because it's going to be done in a solo public session, so you can have your biker business set in, in Blaine County if you really want which is cheaper to purchase and the sale missions are quicker because the locations are more compact. And I advise to always do sale missions with friends just to speed up the process because there is one sale type mission being the box or vans which can't be sold alone because you will always run out of time so I advise to play it safe and sell with friends to help. Also it is required to have a minimum of 4 people to sell a full bunker otherwise you'll run out of time as well after delivering just one vehicle if you do it solo. Now let's move on to the CEO side of this money guide where an empty public session is essential to making money. Now that you have an empty public session you want to start filling up your vehicle warehouse with as many standard and mid range vehicles. This is because there is a limit on the amount it can give you so then you are increasing your chances of receiving a top range vehicles. So you want to try to aim for around 32 vehicles consisting of standard or mid range so that your chances are significantly increased in receiving top range. And from there onwards only sell top range vehicles consistently rotating between source missions and sell missions and occasionally check on supplies every 2 hours for the bike businesses and every 144 minutes for the bunker supplies. So you might as well just do the bikers businesses supplies when you do your bunkers anyway. Also to speed up the vehicle cargo missions you can always use a cargo bob which reduces the amount of damage you have to the vehicle you have collected or are selling significantly helping you save money in the long run so it might be worth investing into a cargo bob if you intend on doing the vehicle cargo a lot. Now here's where the cargo warehouse comes into play. Now I advise only doing cargo for the CEO when a money bonus is active in Grand Theft Auto Online. Otherwise it is a complete waste of time if you're doing it with no money bonuses uh, active at the point in time. Because the vehicle warehouse is still better because you produce more money faster. That is why I highly recommend only doing the cargo warehouses during a money bonus. Anyway moving on. So you want to own two large warehouses as a minimum. 
for this method to work effectively and preferably have them located near the top or the east side of Los Santos because that is where the most commonly the collection missions occur and in addition to this you want to be doing free crate collections this is because it fills up a lot faster and by rotating between warehouses enables you to skip the cooldown timer for doing collections. Now it takes approximately 37 collections to fill up a single full large warehouse doing free crates meaning that requires 74 collections in order to fill up two full large warehouses. And yes it is tedious and repetitive doing this but is another reason why I advise that you only do cargo warehouses during a money event. Now it is essential to buy a buzzard from Warsaw Cash and Carry just because once you have purchased it you are then allowed to spawn the buzzard for free wherever you are on the map near a road through the secure reserve in the interaction menu you, instead of having to pay the fee to spawn it in if you don't own a personal buzzard through the secure reserve. Also you would be surprised in how handy the buzzard comes in for completing the collections for the cargo warehouses just because it is simply a complete nightmare trying to complete them if you don't own a buzzard especially when the dreaded collections where the free crates split up and aren't in a vehicle meaning multiple runs back to the warehouse however there is a way to tell 100% if the collection for the warehouse is split up or in a vehicle so it gives you a little bit of preparation now the way you're able to tell before you've left the office once you've purchased supplies is as simple as just bringing up the map and remembering the warehouse that you purchased the supplies for where its location is on the map. Because if the warehouse symbol for the warehouse you brought cargo for disappears off the map that is a vehicle mission and if the warehouse symbol is still on the map for the warehouse you brought supplies to collect that means that it's the mission is going to have split up crates. However, there is a little secret trick I'm going to tell you how you can potentially collect all three crates at once just being one person in a scenario that is a split up mission. Making it rather simple but it involves an adventure and its weapon station upgrade. Which is rather expensive but you'll easily get your money back from it just like the buzzard by doing the cargo warehouse. Anyway, as I was saying, so if the crates are indeed split up and you haven't arrived to them yet because you used the technique I told you about earlier on how to tell if the crates are split up or in a vehicle, then you want to go ahead and proceed to use the buzzard from the secure serve and then request the Avenger to spawn him. And then after that, you want to then proceed to the head over to the Avenger and head towards the split up crates location. Now once you have arrived at the location and are about to pick up the crates, you want to be aware of which crate symbols light up in the bottom right because for some reason the first crate on the far left of the free crate symbols located in the bottom right of the screen the far left crate for some reason won't be stored inside the Avenger so you want to try and leave that, last, that crate last if you can however there is no way to tell which crate is what in the bottom right symbols unless it's a murder mystery or a plane crash mission then it is possible to know what crate is a certain crate blip but you have to remember the crate positions for those missions to know what blip the crates light up though. In the scenario that it isn't one of those missions where you can't memorize the crate blip locations and it's a random guess, then you just want to collect the crate and bring it to the rear entrance of the Avenger and enter the Avenger and interact with the weapon station, which drops the crates inside your Avenger, allowing you to rinse and repeat storing the crates inside your Avenger until you encounter the crate that can't go inside the Avenger which is the far left blip on the through crate symbols in the bottom right. Now if you encounter that crate before you finish storing the other crates inside your Avenger, then just simply bring the bad crate to the Avenger and kill yourself, dropping the crate allowing you to get the remaining crates and storing them inside the Avenger. Then just collect the bad crate manually and fly your Avenger back to your warehouse. Now another reason why the Avenger is worth the investment is because it potentially can allow you to do collections in populated sessions, which I don't advise by the way, because you can see here, I have landed my Avenger and I'm currently dropping off the first crate, being the bad crate, in the warehouse, and when I return outside to go collect the remaining crates stored in my Avenger, my Avenger blows up, which would make most people panic, but the beauty of the Avenger is that the crates don't get destroyed when the Avenger gets destroyed. They just remain in your Avenger waiting for you to request your Avenger again, then finish delivering the crates making it invulnerable to any griefers. Not only that, but the crate icons on the map that are stored on the Avenger will appear at Mount Chiliad, confusing any griefer trying to destroy your cargo because your cargo will actually stay safe inside your Avenger, despite it saying that it's been destroyed or whatever. Now you just need to implement the methods I provided being cargo, vehicle cargo, remember to check supplies levels every 144 minutes in your bike businesses and the bunker, allowing you to potentially produce 
4 million dollars a day. Now don't forget to check out the app through the link down in the description with my code embedded in it allowing you to get a head start on the app close to achieving some rewards that could be money on Grand Theft Auto Online, free or money in general for other services. In addition to this, don't forget to check out the guide on how to get an empty public session. The link will be down in the description. Now, I hope today's video helped and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye!